Four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Family plan discount with four lines, all on the silver and limited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Make Mother's Day easy this year and get the best gift ever a blanket from Minky Couture. Minky Couture creates the amazingly soft, comfy, and cozy Minky blankets and robes. Just in time for Mother's Day, save 50% off any regularly priced Minky Couture blanket using promo code KSL50 at checkout. Shop online at MinkyCouture.com or visit your local Minky Couture for special neighborhood deals. Again, save 50% with promo code KSL50 in stores or online at MinkyCouture.com. The Salt Lake Chamber is Utah's voice for business. Okay, that sounds great, but what does it really mean? Well, as Utah's largest and longest-standing business association, they support and champion community prosperity throughout the state. And if you're in business, well, that's a very good thing for you. Be sure to listen to the Chamber's Speaking on Business, weekdays at 7.20, 11.55, and 5.20 p.m. on KSL News Radio. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. We had traffic coming to a very slow drive northbound I-15, uh, about 7,800 south, so prior to 72nd. Not sure what was causing that slowdown, but it looks to have eased, and traffic is starting to move through the area again. No accidents reported on your freeways or main secondaries. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Showers will taper off tonight. Skies clear up tomorrow and highs stay in the 60s through the rest of the week. Right now, 45 degrees and cloudy. I'm Dan Bonas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com for Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. The headlines late last week President Biden gave Iran a one word warning about attacking Israel. Don't. Over the weekend, Iran did in a major way. So what should Israel and the U.S. do in response? The deeper dive into the question of retaliation or restraint. Let's start with that. Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. In a significant uh, attack over the weekend, uh, over 300 uh, missiles, drones, Uh, Ballistic missiles fired from inside Iran at Israel. Uh, All, of course, were uh, either taken down or deflected off uh, somewhere else. Uh, And we want to dive in kind of underneath the headlines in terms of what happens and what happens now. Uh, In particular, I thought it was interesting. The president, of course, leading into the weekend was very stern and very specific to Iran. Don't do it. Uh, And they did. Uh, And now the president is calling for restraint for Israel. And I'm one who believes in restraint, and we have to unpack it in terms of what does that actually mean? And will that serve as a deterrent? Will that uh, further galvanize those against Iran? Uh, what does it mean to the region as a whole? So there's there's a lot to unpack. And before we even begin this course, uh, I want to just caution everyone. We have to walk this stuff through slow. Uh, it's so easy to get to the sensational. It's so easy to get just to the headlines. It's so easy to conflate different things, this and that, and who did what, and yeah, but, and all of that. And so we want to take a a very methodical approach. We're going to start uh, with just a breakdown of some of the things that we do know. Uh, And then we're going to be uh, joined coming up uh, at 120 by Robert Sherman from News Nation, who is inside of Israel, uh, who will give us some insight and perspective in terms of what's happening there. So we want to look at all the angles, all the things that are happening, and things to consider. There's just a lot to think through. Uh, Of course, this uh, is a region that has had its problems for thousands of years now. Uh, And so none of it's going to be solved swiftly, but it should be done strategically. 
And so let's get some of the things that we do know on the table. Strategic Communication Director for the White House, John Kirby, appeared, I think, on every possible news network over the weekend. Uh, he also appeared on CNBC early this morning to talk about the developing situation. Here's how he characterized the conversation between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over the phone on Saturday after the attack. The president's message to Prime Minister Netanyahu on Saturday night when they spoke was, first of all, uh, co uh, congratulations for an incredible military achievement uh, that uh, that Israel and its partners uh, accomplished in defending Israeli uh, sovereignty uh, and, and the Israeli people, but also uh, to, to the message that it sends to the world that Israel is not alone and that they are superior and that Iran completely, utterly failed. So those were important messages coming out of the White House uh, and just I want to unpack a couple of those I think that are important. Uh, so one, it was very clear and in a number of the reports that have come out about the conversation between the president and the prime minister, President Biden was very emphatic to his counterpart, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, saying, take the win. In other words, in his call for restraint, the president was saying, you won. You won the round. Uh, you showed uh, Iran, who I think had miscalculated, thinking perhaps that uh, because of what's happening in Gaza and the battle against Hamas, that uh, Israel and the prime minister, for that matter, were very isolated on the world stage. And yes, that has been happening uh, with the escalation in Gaza, the need to get aid in there to innocent civilians. Uh, they were becoming increasingly isolated. But it was very clear uh, that they are not that isolated. The fact that the United States and Great Britain and France, as well as Jordan and other Middle East partners, came and were part of shooting down those 300-plus uh, things that were fired uh, into Israel from Iran. Uh, and so that's an interesting component, that the president is saying, Mr. Prime Minister, take the win. You won. You showed that Israel is not isolated. You also showed great capability and capacity in terms of defense uh, and also proved that Iran was ineffective in what they were trying to do. Now, on Meet the Press yesterday, uh, John Kirby was asked if the attack had, uh, was going to spark a wider war in the Middle East, and here's how he responded. The president doesn't believe that it needs to move in that direction whatsoever. Very little got through, and the damage was extraordinarily light. And also, I, Israel demonstrated again, as I said, that they're not standing alone, that they have friends. The president's been clear, we don't want to see this escalate. We don't, we're not looking for a wider war with Iran. Know that the president is working the diplomatic side of this personally. In fact, today, just a little bit later today, he's going to call the G7 together to talk about a diplomatic response. So looking at how things progress, I think, is the the important component to all of this. Uh, I thought it was interesting uh, that the, we had uh, our friend, of course, uh, University of Utah law professor Amos Giora was on KSL News Radio earlier today with Dave Janovic talking about uh, really this lose-lose scenario that Iran had launched and that they had just failed geopolitics 101 uh, in terms of what they launched and, and what they were actually up against. But I think the interesting thing in all of that is I, I think uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini was really banking on this idea that uh, the United States was not focused on this, that the uh, supreme leader was really feeling that uh, there wouldn't be a response, that there wouldn't be this kind of rallying around Israel. Uh, and so I think in that uh, they definitely miscalculated uh, thinking that uh, that they would be able to to just do that. There was a lack of resolve. That's sort of been the bet, I think, by Khomeini, uh, is that there's a lack of resolve in the region, especially from the United States, and clearly that's not how things played out over the weekend. Now, I think the test will be uh, what comes next. And uh, so during the White House press briefing today, there was a really interesting exchange between John Kirby and a reporter uh, who asked if America was giving Iran a free pass and free reign to act without consequences. Listen to this exchange. John, just one day before the attack, President Biden issued a warning to Iran, don't. And now the U.S. is not taking any part in an Israeli reprisal. So does that signal to Iran that it can defy the U.S. without facing any consequences? I don't know, man. If I'm sitting in Tehran and I'm taking a look at what just happened on Saturday night, I don't think I'd be betting that the United States is uh, not willing to get engaged here and help defend Israel. I mean, you had American fighter pilots in the air, in combat operations, shooting down drones and missiles that were heading towards 
uh, towards Israel, as well as U.S. Navy destroyers at sea, knocking them down from there. So the message should be very clear to anybody. When the president says we're going to take our commitments to the region seriously, when we're going to help Israel defend itself, we got skin in the game and we proved that. Interesting words from uh, John Kirby from the podium just about an hour ago, uh, talking about uh, how things were playing out and uh, what really comes next. It's been very interesting. All of the calls from the international stage uh, have been restraint. And I I am one who believes restraint works. Uh, And uh, there also has to be consequences. And I think this is one of those that's going to get more complicated before it gets more clear. And Israel has remained and retained its right to defend, protect, and be its own deterrent. Uh, Sometimes I think the administration, in its desire to de-escalate, has not put strong enough deterrence in place uh, for actors like Iran. Now, we're going to stay with the conversation. When we come back, Robert Sherman from News Nation is going to join us live from Israel. We'll get some response there. And then coming up in hour number two, we're actually going to look at an interesting byproduct of all of this uh, that may actually be a benefit both to Benjamin Netanyahu, the embattled prime minister, and also right here at home with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. So stay with us. Much more to come on Inside Sources. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Common Spirit Health has expert orthopedic care that gets you back at it and back to your best. Find skilled orthopedic physicians at Common Spirit locations who specialize in general orthopedics and repair of hips, knees, shoulders, and hands so you can return to running races or chasing the grandkids. Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advanced health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Orthopedic care with human kindness is here. Visit mountain.commonspirit.org. A lot can happen in 24 hours. The new task force includes state and federal agencies. The Pentagon continues to monitor threats. No accidents on any of your Salt Lake County freeways. Catch up on your drive home. Southern Utah University has the all clear from police. Jeff Kaplan's afternoon news gets you current. And his trademark minute of news will get you thinking. Moderation. That's how John Tinniswood says he became the world's oldest man. Jeff Kaplan has you covered. 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and there's a good chance you've heard me talking about our free furnace sale. The one where you buy a new air conditioner and we give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it? About 400 bucks. Well, we still have a few more spots on our schedule we need to fill, so I'm extending the sale, but I'm not quite sure for how much longer. Definitely no later than April 30th, and once I think our schedule's full enough, I gotta pull these ads, so don't wait too long to call and schedule your free estimate. The main reason we do this sale is to give you an incentive to help us keep our guys busy when the weather's mild. And thanks to your help, we're able to keep our guys and keep growing. So if your furnace and air conditioner are ready to be replaced, you owe it to yourself to at least schedule a free estimate and get all the details about our free furnace sale. Just to recap, when you have any hour services install a new air conditioner, we'll give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it. About 400 bucks. The furnace is free, you just pay the labor. If you think you might be interested, call any hour services at 801-443-7400. You can Google any hour services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than any hour services. Right now might just be the perfect time to upgrade your living space to one that has, well, a little more space. You've earned the equity in your home. It's now time to put it to good use. Whether it's opening up a cramped or dated floor plan, adding a little more luxury to your bath, or finally building the kitchen of your dreams, Golden West Credit Union has a home equity line of credit for a low introductory rate of 5.49% APR fixed for six months. With a Golden West home equity credit line, you'll save money with no fees or closing costs. And Golden West makes accessing the equity in your home easy with a Visa Platinum Card. Start making the most of your equity today and make your plans a reality. Apply at any branch, online at gwcu.org or on our mobile app. Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 440574. We'll take care of you. When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede. 
except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double-pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah, they install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. 79 missionaries trapped and penniless inside Germany borders with war days away. From director T.C. Christensen comes Escape from Germany in theaters now. Tickets at escapefromgermany.com. I'm Dave Cauley, investigative journalist and host of the podcast, Cold. Don't miss Cold's new season three, where I look into the unsolved disappearance of Cherie Warren, a woman last seen leaving her job at a Salt Lake City office in 1985. Police cast suspicion on Cherie's estranged husband and boyfriend, but never made any arrests or recovered Cherie's remains. Find Cold season three, The Search for Cherie, anywhere you get your podcasts. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Our goal every day on Inside Sources is to help you divide the rage from the reason, elevate the conversation, connect the dots, and make the news make sense in your world. We have conversations with great thinkers, with great leaders, and great people who are just out there making a difference in the world. Now, we do talk about politics, but only so we can discuss society and culture. And then we explore society and culture so we can discuss principles and the people in America and the state of Utah who actually live them and apply them every day. We bring the best and brightest minds to the state of Utah, and we love to take the Utah model and send it out to our nation's capital and beyond. Every day on Inside Sources, you'll be part of that conversation. To help you understand things in a different way, we'll get you to think again about what you think you know. But most important, we're going to help you have confidence to have crucial conversations in your community and in your own home. Join Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3, on KSL News Radio. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bombas. First, experts say we should be in no hurry right now to get water on our lawns. Second, protesters blocked traffic in cities around the country today, demanding an end to the war in Gaza. And third, construction beginning this week on a new section of the Mountain View Corridor. 45 degrees and cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Get deeper insights on the news from Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. We're staying with the conversation just a little bit longer as it relates to the Middle East and what Israel may do in response to Iran's latest attack. And we're really pleased and grateful once again to have back on the program with us Robert Sherman from News Nation. He is the best of the best. He's uh, dialing in from Israel. And uh, Robert, give us a uh, quick sense of uh, what is the the mood, what is the feeling on the ground as you've watched over the last uh, 24 hours? Yeah, I guess the best way to do that, Boyd, is to compare it to October 8th when I got in here after the October Mm. 7th attack. I mean, you know, six, seven months ago, there was a lot of anxiety and tension on the ground. People didn't know what was what the next couple of days were going to bring, but they did have a broader understanding that there would be war with Hamas. I mean, there was just so much anxiety here. This go around, it's very different. I mean, you still have anxiety, but I I think something to notice is that Israel's a unique country in that the average citizen has an above average understanding of warfare Mm -hmm. and military capabilities. And why that's significant is, is that you have a country such as Iran, which Israel is potentially tangling with, which has significantly more firepower than Hamas does. So people recognize that a war with Iran would look very different. So people here are are hoping that the situation yields a positive result. Now, that being said, um, in the wake of that attack on Saturday here, pretty much everybody on the ground is in agreement that from their perspective, that was unacceptable, that that was a violation of sovereignty and there has to be some kind of a response. But war is a game of chess. 
And if you overplay your hand too much, well, then you have a very different situation. So it's a game of trying to weigh reestablishing deterrence with avoiding sparking the powder keg that is the Middle East right now. That's kind of the sentiment that is on the minds of many people. Yeah, that uh, restraint versus retaliation and uh, doing that in that uh, chess-like manner, I think, is the is the real test. And I think it's been so interesting. One, I think uh, Iran clearly underestimated how isolated Israel was, and, and in particular the prime minister. And, and I really wanted to ask you, Robert, what's the sense on the ground? Obviously, Benjamin Netanyahu has... Uh, been in a pretty tenuous spot of late, even having some of the hostage families uh, joining some of the protesters against the government. Uh, did uh, Iran just give him a chance to maybe be emboldened a little bit or at least uh, get his sea legs a little bit in terms of what he does next? I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, here, here's the deal is, is that, I mean, there has been for months you know, sowed dissent against the prime minister, and a lot of yeah. people blame October 7th on him. I think that there needs to be a day of accountability. But there is also, you know, there are some who are calling for early elections, but there are also a lot of people here who who believe in the old adage of don't change horses midstream mm-hmm. and ride this out and get through the crisis that is at hand and then have the conversation where the country proceeds forward. There really aren't a lot of leaders in Israel right now who have the experience for a situation like this other than Benjamin Netanyahu. I mean, you could make an argument for Benny Gantz. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, aside from that, I mean, it's, it's a pretty short list, all things considered. So it is quite possible. Uh, but, I mean, I, it, I, I would say that there is that broader sentiment of people do want a sense of accountability but want to get through the situation that's at hand. Yeah, no question about that. And uh, as you uh, get a sense for the reaction to the U.S. reaction, obviously the U.S. response in terms of being part of that coalition with the U.K. and France, Jordan, and some of the other uh, uh, allies there in the Middle East uh, in responding there, and then sort of the mixed messages from the Biden administration of the the don't uh, to Iran and then restraint to Israel, uh, getting, you know, sending fighter jets, uh, but uh, also condemning. What is the sense on the ground in Israel in terms of is the U.S. really there for Israel, or is there some confusion or lack of clarity in terms of do we really have an ally in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, that that is something that people are talking about here because, I mean, you hear these statements like we're with Israel shoulder to shoulder, you know, and our, and our, and our resolve and our alliance is ironclad. But then you hear statements that make it conditional, you know. I mean, it is really only on the defensive sphere. If Iran attacks Israel, we're with you. If you attack Iran— we're not going to help you on that front. I mean, that, that is definitely a factor that goes into this conversation about how exactly is Israel going to respond uh, to this attack on Iran, because I mean, it, it's possible that, that they're going to be on their own, you know, it, it, when, when all is said and done here. Uh, so I mean, that's that's a big part of this here. I mean, I, I would say that, that there are so many competing sentiments on the ground. Is that I mean, there are some here in Israel who who believe that some kind of a strike like this, a massive strike, is necessary. But there are others who are worried about what the days after will look like. This all plays into that. Yeah, give me a, a sense of. Uh, I think you framed that so perfectly, Robert. In terms of those competing sentiments, uh, it, it, I spent an hour this morning just trying to figure that out myself. In terms of, you know, you go headlines and uh, kind of the hyperbole stuff at the top level. Uh, but then you've got some real practical, tactical stuff that you've got to get to as well. Uh, anything else that you're sensing over there or anything surprising to you as you've been uh, back on the ground inside of Israel? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of context here is, is that, I mean, when I mean, it, the, the average Israeli, you know, I mean, views Iran as this effective puppet master. And there are some people here in Israel who've been saying for years, you know, thump Iran as, mm-hmm. as hard as possible, you know, and this, you know, to an extent— it, you know, provides Israel with a green light in order to satisfy some of those desires. Because, I mean, there is this belief that, I mean, point to a source of tension in the region, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, follow the breadcrumbs back to Tehran. I mean, that, that's what a lot of people look at here. Now, that being said, you know, while there might be that desire from some people on the ground here to be proactive and, you know, c- carry out preemptive measures against Iran. There are others who think that, you know, I mean, m- maybe in the long run, that that's not the best course of action. Because, again, I mean, you are talking about a much more formidable foe here. I mean, to give you an example, I mean, I'm standing here in Tel Aviv right now. There are people at the beach all day today. 
Mm. You know, I mean, I mean, it's like now that the war with Hamas has gotten to this point, you know, I mean, the Iron Dome has been very effective. Hamas's capabilities have been destroyed. People are starting to feel comfortable returning to normal life. War with Iran probably is not going to include days at the beach is the reality of this situation. It would be a very, very different environment here. It would have significant strains on society, which you're not necessarily sure if, you know, if, if the, every citizen wants to bear that cost. Again, it depends who you ask here, but that's all part of this mix. Yeah, and then final question for you, Robert. Uh, I know you are uh, going nonstop over there 24-7. Uh, does this embolden... Benjamin Netanyahu, both in terms of obviously dealing with Iran, uh, and I don't think they would be looking at any of the nuclear site targets. I don't think he's emboldened that far. But does it also embolden him in terms of what's going on inside of Gaza? Does this kind of give him a little bit of a reset? Potentially, because, I mean, we've even seen the defense minister come out today. And, you know, I mean, there, there are photos of him meeting with his staff talking about what an invasion of Rafa would look like and how to evacuate civilians. I mean, that's as of today. It is so that that side of the story has not gone away. I mean, obviously, we're talking about Iran right now, you know, but there's still very much so an active situation going on in Gaza. All signs are pointing to the fact that the Israelis remain committed to go into Rafah, root out Hamas, destroy them once and for all, and, and then get to the other side of that conflict there. I mean, obviously, you've heard from a lot of world leaders now, including the U.S., who are urging Israel to not do that, but all public sentiment points to. It, that that's a matter of when, not if. Great perspective as always. Best of the best, Robert Sherman, national correspondent for News Nation, live from, from Tel Aviv. Uh, Robert, thanks so much for making time for us today. We really appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Boyd. Always a pleasure. All right, that's Robert Sherman, national correspondent for News Nation. Uh, he does this as well as anybody in the business, uh, and I always appreciate Robert's perspective because he gives you what you need to know. Uh, so that you can start thinking and connecting the dots for yourself. And that's what it's all about. We'll step aside for some bottom of the hour news. We're going to come back to this topic in hour number two and look at the implications right here in the U.S. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's 1.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top story this hour. Construction begins this week on a section of the Mountain View Corridor. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi reports on the $466 million project. This section will be different. It'll be a fully functioning freeway. Wyatt Woolley with the Department of Transportation says the portion will run parallel to I-15 to 2100 North and Lehigh, where it will hook up with an east-west section. So basically, we'll have like a U-shaped full freeway between Mountain View Corridor 2100 North and I-15 between Salt Lake County and Utah County. Currently, commuters are using Redwood Road from 2100 North and Lehigh to Porter Rockwell Boulevard in Salt Lake County. Tammy Kikuchi, KSL News Radio. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. The weapons expert convicted of involuntary manslaughter on a movie set in New Mexico will spend 18 months in prison. Hannah Gutierrez was sentenced today in Santa Fe. She told the court she's not the monster. She's been made out to be just someone who did her best in a tough job. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins died when the gun went off in the hands of actor Alec Baldwin. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average continuing to slide 235 points down now, the NASDAQ down 292. And our KSL weather, things are going to clear up, dry out tomorrow. That's next. KSL News Time 131. News doesn't just mean information or dates. It's the story of our local history being told in real time. Be a part of the story. This is Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. We hope to be a part of your story. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early 
so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Believe it or not, most small businesses don't have a 401k. If you don't have a 401k, you are missing out on the greatest wealth creation tool ever created. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and many 401ks are overpriced for the employer, have expensive and underperforming investment options, and have tedious administrative provisions. Not at Trajan Wealth. We can set up a 401k for a company for only 8 bucks per employee, a $65 per plan fee, plus a small advisory fee. That's right, not thousands or even the tens of thousands you've been quoted and do it all in less time than it takes to sit in traffic if you have five or more employees these 401ks will help you attract and retain top talent and if you're an employee and don't have a 401k tell your boss call Trajan Wealth today call 801-899-7600 that's 801-899-7600 services offered through a third-party partner. Utah, you love the spring, so don't spend it painting. Do what Mike did. He called Rhino Shield. Our home is basically a contemporary with stucco finish, and we just started noticing that the the paint was just fading, and the stucco would just look like garbage. We had received a postcard from Rhino Shield, and we decided to to take a look at it. Rhino Shield ceramic technology is formulated for our unique climate here in Utah, and is Class 1 fire rated. The process with Rhino Shield and their crew, they were just very conscientious. We had problems in the past with painters. They leave debris and everything. Well, we didn't have that with Rhino Shield. Now you can get the guaranteed protection of Rhino Shield for 15% off the regular price. The thing about Rhino Shield, the heat gain has been reduced. We save $70 a month. You don't hear that about any type of paint. Remember, Utah, this is a limited time offer. So call now, 435-246-4466 or rhinoshieldwest.com. That's rhinoshieldwest.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. We are looking at a quiet drive on the Valley Freeway. Some areas of the valley still seeing wet road conditions. Some areas are driving out. You just need to be a little bit of care, a little bit careful if you're on wet road surfaces. We've seen a lot of crashes that could have been related to the weather. Lagoon is looking for ride maintenance technicians. Lagoon offers excellent mechanical training programs with amazing career opportunities. Ride maintenance technician position is full time and year round details visit lagoonpark.com forward slash jobs ricky meese in the ksl traffic center showers taper off tonight skies clear up tomorrow highs stay in the 60s though through the rest of the week 45 degrees and cloudy right now i'm dan bombas from the ksl common spirit health studios listen online at kslnewsradio.com for utah's news traffic and weather station Inside Sources. Inside Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, it is tax day, April 15th, and nothing unites the nation like all of us grumbling that we have to pay our taxes and get our taxes filed. And it is the last day to file your 2023 taxes on time, unless you file an extension, of course. Uh, With that comes a lot of conversation about who should pay more and what's going on and what is it getting me and all of that. And so uh, we always turn to someone who helps us unpack all of that. Eric Baim, of course, reporter at Reason, covers uh, economic policy, trade policy and elections. And uh, today we want to start with this whole idea of the real tax gap. Uh, It is tax day. So who is picking up the tab today? And uh, Eric, welcome back to the show. Unhappy tax day to you, boys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's always an unhappy tax day. Uh, it does seem to unite the nation, though. It is one of those things that can absolutely unite everyone. I think the two things are everyone having to grumble and file their taxes and anyone standing in a line at the DMV. I think those are the great uniters of the nation at the moment. <laughs> and uh, But give us a sense in terms of a lot of clickbait stuff, a lot of headlines out there. But what's the reality in terms of how tax day play, plays out and who's actually paying the bill? 
Yeah, I'll tell you, my mood uh, was better than usual paying my taxes this year, only because it was such a gorgeous weekend here in Virginia. And <laughs> I got my taxes done on Saturday and then got to spend the rest of the weekend outside. It actually helped a little bit. Uh, but no, frustrated as always. Um, you know, but but I am uh, I, I'm, I'm thankful, actually, for the people who make a lot more money than me who are picking up most of the tab. Uh, and that's what we looked at in this piece that's at reason right now. Um, in fact, I think, you know, th this gets lost, I think, in a lot of the rhetoric around taxes, a lot of the talk of, you know, making the wealthy pay their fair share that you hear from uh, the president and, and many other people on the left and some even on the right at this point, too. Um, and, uh, y you know, the, the fact of the matter is that close to 50 percent of all taxes are actually paid by uh, the, the wealthy, the wealthiest uh, section of, uh, of Americans. And uh, that uh, that share of taxes paid by the wealthy, paid by the top 1 percent of earners uh, who paid 46 percent of all income taxes uh, in 2021, that, that share has actually been increasing over time. The tax code is becoming more and more progressive. Uh, I don't think you, would, you wouldn't necessarily know that from a lot of the rhetoric that you hear, though. Yeah, and I think it is, it's so easy to just uh, throw that out there. They should, they should be paying more. Uh, and I, I think it's interesting. You, you went through and you debunked a lot of these things. And the, the first one that you mentioned, I just want to – have everyone pause on that for a second, that the wealthiest Americans are paying a higher share, a bigger percentage of federal taxes than at any time in the last 40 years. So under Democrats and Republicans, uh, they're now paying more. The wealthiest are paying the more um, more than they ever have. Yeah, that's right. So I think what what happens here, I think people get confused about, is the fact that the uh, the tax rate on the wealthy has actually fallen quite a bit over the last 50 years. Right? You go back to 1980, and before that, the highest marginal tax rate was 70 percent, uh, which is just shockingly that, high. Yeah. I can't believe anyone ever <laughs> accepted that. Uh, these days, it's 37 percent is the highest tax bracket. So uh, you know the, the the marginal tax rate on high earners. Uh, has gone down, but the actual amount of money uh, that, they're, that they're paying has actually increased over time, and the and the tax code has become more progressive because fewer and fewer uh, taxpayers at the low end of the scale are paying anything these days mm -hmm. because we've created lots of different tax credit programs, lots of different ways. Of, first of all, of course, the, the higher uh, the uh, the higher allowance under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act uh, that uh, lets you take you know twelve thousand dollars or so just right off the top. That you don't owe any taxes on. Uh, that's cut out a lot of, of uh, low income, uh, low and, and even some mid income people from having to pay uh, taxes at all. So the most recent data we have from 2021 suggests that the bottom 50 percent of all earners, and that's not all people, that's just people earning money right in the yeah. economy. The bottom 50 percent paid just 2.3 percent of federal income taxes uh, in 2021. Uh, again, you can contrast that with the fact that the top 1 percent paid 46 percent of all federal income taxes. So uh, the, the, the rich, you know, I don't know, we can all debate exactly what the a fair share actually is. And of course, one of the great things about that talking point is that the answer can always just be more, right? If that's, right. If that's the perspective <laughs> you want people to take. Uh, but the reality is that the wealthy are already shouldering the majority of the tax burden in America. Yeah. And you noted in your piece, uh, one of the often claims that, you know, that the billionaires are paying, you know, 6% or 8% uh, appeared, you know, compared to the a uh, person working at the uh, fast food place, you know, paying a higher percentage. Uh, and those numbers just don't seem to add up in the end. Um, and so kind of walk us through that quick. Yeah, sure. That's right. I mean, it's, uh, the fact of the matter is that you do have, uh, you know, you you have uh, said, you know, the, the, the amount of money I think that somebody who's, you know, looking at the, the tax rate is not necessarily getting you uh, the ultimate answer there, right, for like right. how much someone is paying in taxes. Um, so I think that's significant. And I think the I think this disconnect kind of the, the bigger point of the piece that I wrote, you know, this the, the tax gap, the idea of a tax gap is the amount, you know, different what the government thinks they're going to collect versus how much they actually do. But there's this kind of rhetorical tax gap that exists, right. too, because when you do polling on questions like this, what you find is that, you know, 69, 70 percent of Americans uh, support raising taxes on people who are earning over four hundred thousand dollars annually. That's that's not even all that wealthy, to be honest. But you do see this appetite out there for raising taxes on the wealthy. Um, and you also see, I think, just sort of a lack of awareness on the part of Americans about uh, who pays what taxes to begin with. Um, the, the Tax Foundation actually just put out a great study last week showing that uh, close to 80 percent of people in this survey that they did you know, didn't know uh, the share of taxes paid by the wealthiest 1% of mm -hmm. Americans. Um, but, you know, at the same time, 65% of people in that survey thought their own taxes were too high. 
So what you have there is you have a sense, I think, for most people, and this is totally understandable and totally rational even. Uh, you know, there's a sense that, well, my taxes are too high. I want to pay less, but I also want to consume government services, and someone else should pay for that. So, you know, we make other people pay for it. Yeah. But that, that just lacks an awareness, I think, of, uh, of just how progressive the tax code is, and that really muddies the water on any sort of conversation about how the tax code should change. Yeah, no question about that. And uh, I, I do just want to go back to that point. I, I, I'd love to see a poll question uh, to, to ask, do you think it would be right for the government to tax 70 percent of anyone's income, to just take 70 yeah. percent of whatever you're earning? We're going to take 70 cents on the dollar. Uh, I don't know that anybody would uh, would sign up for that one. Uh, but let's get to the kind of one final thing before I let you go real quick. Uh, I think part of this also comes to the fact uh, that you were alluding to that on one hand, we want to consume more of those government services. And at the same time, we be, we're less and less satisfied with what we're receiving from government. How does that play into all of our attitudes and perceptions about taxes? Yeah, well, certainly the lack, I think the lack of understanding about the way the tax code works and the lack of understanding about who pays the bulk of federal taxes as I said, it muddies the water on some of these conversations uh, about about what changes should be made. And, and we have to have those conversations, Boyd, as, as you know. I mean, we talk about this on this program all the time. Uh, the United States is running a massive annual deficit, like structural deficits, right? Uh, to get that under control, to get the debt under control, to address Social Security, all of these conversations will require some sort of trade-off of, you know, well, do we cut things the government spends money on? Do we raise taxes? If we raise taxes, who do we raise taxes on? Uh, and it's it's difficult, I think, for, for Americans to grasp those, you know, the, 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 the answers that they may have, the sincere answers that they may have yeah. to those questions, because there is this lack of understanding about who's already paying for it. And, and obviously, that's stoked by people in our in our political system. Uh, you know, when the president's out there saying, Millionaires and billionaires have to pay more. Millionaires and billionaires are paying less than the, the worker at a fast food restaurant. Uh, you know, that's just fundamentally not true. It's not an accurate picture of the way the tax code works. Mm. Uh, but but if you think that way, and, and, and polls suggest many voters do, uh, then it certainly – it makes it seem like these problems are more easily solved than they actually are. Hey, just raise taxes on the wealthy. That will fix it. Yeah. Uh, when in reality, that's that's not the case. And yeah, and will never be the answer. And whether it's the uh, populace on the left or the populace on the right, uh, it never comes up and it never adds up uh, in the end in terms of what we need yep. to get to. Eric Bame, reporter at Reason, uh, best of the best in breaking it all down for us. And just so you know, it is a dreary, cold tax day here in the state of Utah, not just <laughs> Good, because I have to get mine done. Be. It should be miserable. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. As always, Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Boyd. All Thanks. right, that's Eric Bain from Reason. And it's important, the the bumper sticker stuff, the campaign slogan stuff is easy when it comes to taxes. Actually collecting the taxes, who pays them, what we get out of that, that's the discussion we've got to get to. We'll be right back. Our friends at Hercules Credit Union is your place to go. They've been helping you grow stronger together uh, for a very long time now, all the way back to 1946. And it's always about relationships at Hercules First Federal Credit Union. That's what I love about them the most. It's not about a transaction. It's not just about making a deposit. It's not just about where your money is. Uh, it's about what are you doing to grow stronger? Uh, right now, they have some extraordinary opportunities for you. They have a uh, home equity line of credit, 3.99% for the first six months on all new home equity lines of credit. No origination fees. You also have gold tier checking, which is a great way to get that relationship with Hercules. You'll get reward points for everyday purchases, peace of mind of having the ultimate in identity theft protection, no monthly fees, full service travel and cashback rewards, and much, much more. These are just the beginning of the beginning of the relationship you'll have with Hercules First Federal Credit Union. You can find their locations in Taylorsville, Harriman, Riverton, or Salt Lake City. And as always, you can find them online at HerculesCU.com. That's HerculesCU.com. Sign up for KSL Text Alerts and you could win cash. Text the word cash to 57500 for a chance to win $250. That's cash to 57500. Plus, you'll get breaking news and traffic updates right to your phone. Want to win more prizes? Text contest to 57500. Jazz fans, text the word jazz for breaking Utah jazz news. And Cougar fans, text BYU to 57500 for the latest on the Cougars. Message and data rates may apply. For an alternate entry method and complete contest rules, go to KSL News Radio. 
Radio.com. It's been a rough winter for sure, but visitors are flocking to Box Elder County. Our feathered visitors, that is. Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge is busy hosting swans to swallows, geese to grebes. The spring migration is in full swing, and all that's missing is you. Box Elder County really is for the birds. Just a short 60 minutes north of Salt Lake, Box Elder County is the perfect place to make memories and celebrate spring, along with spending time with our feathered friends. You'll experience amazing restaurants and unique shopping. Come take a soak at Crystal Hot Springs, home to the highest mineral content of any natural hot springs in the world. Let the winter melt away as you relax and rejuvenate. Take in a theater performance at one of the live theaters or visit one of the fine museums. Visitors really are chirping all about Box Elder County. Check out visitboxeldercounty.com and see why Box Elder County is for the birds. That's boxeldercounty.com. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America is number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. If you're trying to decide which gutter protection to put on your home, don't just ask how they'll handle leaves. Ask how they'll handle ice. Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and that's right, ice. See, plenty of gutter guards are good at keeping out leaves, but most are made with flimsy materials that can bend, buckle, and break under the weight of too much ice. Kind of a big problem in an icy state like Utah, right? At RGS Exteriors, our exclusive gutter protection systems are built Utah tough. They're made with premium strength materials that hold up to 1,200 pounds of ice per square foot. Simply put, they're not going to budge. Our gutter guards are also certified to handle hurricane level winds and rain. Mother Nature can't damage them, guaranteed. Utah Tough Products, that's the RGS way. For a free estimate, call 801-280-3110 or visit rgsexteriors.com. That's rgsexteriors.com or 801-280-3110. Any Hour Services can help unclog any drain in your house, whether you have a backup, a clog, or a slow drain you want fixed. Call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. Things you need to know this hour. I'm Dan Bonas. First, a $466 million project to finish the last section of the Mountain View Corridor begins construction this week. Second, a woman who was responsible for the weapons on a movie set where a woman was killed will go to prison for 18 months. And third, beavers are turning up dead around Utah because of a bacterial disease that can affect humans. 45 degrees right now in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It is great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. And, you know, last Friday uh, wasn't here in the studio because I was at a place that uh, actually made my day. Uh, I was part of uh, the 2024 Kindness Summit. Uh, it was held up at the University of Utah, and uh, it was it was just an amazing day with some extraordinary people. Uh, we always round out this program by talking about what we can do to make a difference, and One Kind Act is an organization that is determined to do just that. Uh, it's an amazing initiative. Of course, uh, Khosro Simnani and the Simnani Family Foundation uh, we're the driving forces in launching this and moving it forward. And we want to do just a little breakdown. We're going to have some of the extraordinary stories that took uh, place and were shared at the summit last Friday as we go through the week this week. But really pleased to have uh, back on the program with us, Curtis Bennett, who's the executive director at One Kind Act today. And uh, Curtis, I hope you've recovered from a uh, very big summit uh, over the weekend. 
I have indeed. It took about uh, six extra hours of sleep on Saturday, but I got it done. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, for our listeners, give us a, a little bit of the backstory in terms of One Kind Act and uh, give us your perspective on how the day played out. The day couldn't have gone better, in my personal opinion. A lot of it had to do with uh, just so many people who came in support for what One Kind Act Today is all about. As you stated, uh, One Kind Act Today is, is uh, thanks to Khazar Semnani and the Semnani Family Foundation. And uh, the impetus behind this was we, we need to change the narrative. We can do better. We can, we can deal with one another in a kinder, more gentler way. And so Mr. Semnani uh, began this foundation funded it so that it needs it doesn't need any further resources it's got all the resources that it needs and we can do events like the one that we did the other day and and i I will say that we had a just a stellar mc who did a really great job and we're so grateful that he was there to help us uh promote this message and advocate uh, this cause. Uh, it was a uh, it was a privilege and an honor to be there uh, with such an extraordinary group. And uh, I just want to dive into to some of the conversations that were had. And uh, one of those uh, talked about this whole idea that if each of us help two of us, there's enough of us to deal with anything. We could, we could solve all kinds of problems if each of us will help two of us. Uh, there is enough of us. So that was a statement that was made by Darren Margolius, as you know, who's the executive director of Beast Philanthropy. And what a what an amazing individual. And he's a guy who should know because, uh, as you know, the, the, the reach of their influence is significant with nearly uh, uh, 500 million subscribers to their YouTube channel promote, promoting good, goodness, kindness, uh, charity, positivity. And so, I mean, if if anyone can and should make that statement, it would be him. But what a great statement! Yeah, it was uh, it was really amazing, and you, you just start seeing the ripple effect. Uh, that was such a an inspiring thing to me. We also had the opportunity to have uh, an interfaith conversation uh, that was just I don't even have words for it. It was just an extraordinary thing uh, with an incredible uh, panel. Uh, give us your perspective as you watch that play out. Well, once again, I have to uh, give kudos to the moderator. Uh, that was you. And so uh, thank you very much again. But, you know, we had an idea that that was probably going to be one of the more impactful moments of the day to be able to bring in someone. F- you know, we had an imam there. We had uh, Rabbi Specter. We had Bishop Spiegel. We had Bishop John Western Rabbi. It was Imam uh, Dawood Yassin. And then uh, Elder Brian Taylor. We had this beautiful cross section of all of these different religious cultures and beliefs. And and you know as well as I do, uh, the message was powerful. But the imagery of all of those magnificent individuals standing on stage, uh, linking arms one with another was was what was what we were really hoping for. Uh, that image is ingrained in my mind and in my heart. I'll never forget that day. Yeah, it was a it was a truly powerful moment to see all of those leaders on stage, linked and locked arms, uh, really looking at this is how we make a difference in the world. And uh, we all have a role to play. No small uh-huh. parts or players in this thing. Uh, everybody has to play big. And when we do that, uh, we really can change the trajectory of things. Give us a, a sense of the trajectory. What comes next for One Kind Act? You know, I have to tell you, Boyd, and I am so grateful and I'm humbled by it. If you were able to look at my email and my text messaging and my other social media feeds right now, I'm not quite sure how we're going to keep up. (laughs) Uh, The the whether we wanted to or not, whether we devised it this way or not, we've gone to a new level, and the new level is inspiring. And it's inspiring because it's it's because of people who are literally reacting and acting on the the impressions and the thoughts and the intents that they had uh, throughout the course of the day. And they're saying, there is something we can do, and I do want to be involved. And so by golly, I will be. And so, like I said, I, I'm, I'm inundated right now with all of these people who are saying, let, let, let me know what more. What, yeah. what can we do? Uh, I love it. And uh, th- this is the... Uh... The, the big bite and the long chew, as we like to call it on this show. The long <laughs> chew has that. begun. Uh, also, give us a sense. This was another thing that I it was just so exciting to watch play out, and that is that you haven't been content to have this just be kind of a high-level thing. I love the fact that there were high school students in the audience, and I love the fact that you're spending and giving so much attention 
to getting schools, young grade schools involved in becoming part of this movement of One Kind Act. So thank you so much for bringing that up. We really felt it was important that we had to, to bring this younger generation in. And we had high school age kids there. We had college age kids there because we feel that this narrative is something that we need everyone to hear. And, and the sooner we can get them to hear it, the better off we are. And I have to say, and, and I don't know if this is an announcement or, or anything, but the, 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 the recommendation has been uh, from a number of sources, we should do exactly what we did, but with a bunch of youth. We should bring youth in from all over and do the exact same thing that we did with these adults. Absolutely. All in, I think, is the answer yeah. to, <laughs> to that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, that is fantastic. Curtis Bennett is the executive director at One Kind Act a Day. Uh, it was the uh, 2024 uh, summit uh, on Friday of last week. We're going to have a number of these organizations that are out there doing everything from uh, helping those on our street who are in need of a good meal to those who just need a, a good smile to those who need support in other ways uh, and people not waiting for government to do something, not waiting for a mandate to do something, not waiting for a catastrophe to do something, but just doing one kind act. We can all do that every day. Just imagine what would happen, the flood, the momentum uh, that would take place if everyone was just committed to just One Kind Act today. Curtis Bennett, again, Executive Director of One Kind Act. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, and a big thanks to Kazra Simnani and the Simnani Family Foundation uh, for making all this possible. Our privilege, and thank you. All right. Uh, such a an important thing, and again, on days like today when it's easy to, to get a little down, a little dreary, a little pessimistic about what's going on in the world, what's happening in our politics, uh, all you have to do if you want to have a little hope uh, for a better day, for a brighter day, uh, is to just do one kind act. It's not a big it's not a big thing, but I'm telling you, it is the biggest of things and it is the best of things. Uh, it'll change your world, might change somebody else's in the process. And we're going to continue this conversation as we go throughout the week this week uh, and touch base with some of these organizations right here in our community who are making a difference. That's the name of the game, gang, and that's how uh, we can have great confidence in what lies ahead for our community and for the country. That wraps up hour number one of Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. We'll step aside for some top of the hour news. Don't go anywhere. Big hour number two coming up next. Stick around. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's two o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. Our top story this hour is breaking news. We're one step closer now to getting an NHL team, but still, it's not a done deal. Sportico is reporting that the NHL's executive committee has approved the Arizona Coyotes' move to Salt Lake City. The vote is now moving on to the league's Board of Governors, and if that board votes yes, then the decision is finalized. A storm today going to add even more water to our mountain snowpack. It's going to vary uh, quite significantly between northern Utah and southern Utah. In general, we should be seeing anywhere from about a half an inch to up to an additional inch, maybe a little bit more in localized high elevation areas. And uh, Glenn Merrill, a hydrologist with the National Weather Service, says higher elevations still have a winter snowpack. Mid and lower snowpacks are starting to melt. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. Jury selection now underway for former President Trump's hush money trial in New York City, with dozens of potential jurors preparing for their uh, turn being questioned. The first group includes 96 people. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, sliding still 248 points down on the day. The NASDAQ is down 290. And our KSL weather, things are going to dry out. That's next. KSL News Time 201. You know what's great about KSL's traffic coverage? Trained traffic reporters and real listeners. Trading information and making the commute safer and faster for everyone. Every 10 minutes on the nines. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. 
Introducing Peach Doors and Windows. Are you ready to upgrade your home with stunning new doors but are overwhelmed with how to begin? Peach Doors is here to make the entire process smooth and stress-free. Visit their showroom to see their wide selection of wood doors, durable fiberglass, energy-efficient aluminum, oversized glass bifold doors, and so much more. It's not just about looks, it's about durability and security to protect what matters most. Let them help you find the perfect match for your home, budget, and personal style. Visit their showroom and see for yourself. No pushy sales tactics, only guidance from their experienced staff. No inflated markups just to offer so-called discounts. See their five-star reviews where customers rate them on their attention to detail through every step of the sale and installation process. Amazing home transformations begin with windows and doors. Serving Logan to St. George, just Google Peach Building to see for yourself. Hi everyone, it's Congressman Blake Moore here. It's been a great several months engaging with Utahns across the first district at in-person town halls, community events, facility tours, schools, and much more. I love the opportunity to meet with you and hear your concerns and priorities. I've also enjoyed hosting regular telephone town halls this year, and I'm looking forward to our next one on April 17th at 12.30 p.m. We will discuss everything from federal budgeting reform to the crisis at the southern border from national security policy to public lands issues. Dial in at 833-305-1678 on Wednesday, April 17th at 12.30 p.m. That's 833-305-1678 on Wednesday, April 17th at 12.30 p.m. I'd love for you to call in and ask a question. Due to U.S. law, I will be unable to communicate with constituents 60 days leading up to the primary election unless you are subscribed to our weekly e-newsletter or follow us on social media. Please be sure to sign up for our e-newsletter at blakemore.house.gov and follow along on socials at Rep. Blake Moore. Paid for by official funds authorized by the House of Representatives. Spring is a great time to elevate the look of your home and landscape by adding beautiful flowers to the yard and patio. And pros and hobbyists alike know that the best flowers are grown by Olson's Greenhouse, right here in the mountain valleys of Utah. This is Brian with Olson's Greenhouse, and my family has been growing flowers with love and care for over 80 years. That's four generations of a local, family-run Utah business. So whether you're looking to add a pop of color to the back patio or a beautiful flower bed to the front landscape, Flowers from Olson's Greenhouse are the perfect finishing touch to make your yard a joy to relax in. Stop by OGG.com or find us on Instagram at Olson's Greenhouse Gardens, where you'll find inspiring photos to get you going on your flower gardening journey. You can also find a local retailer carrying plants from Olson's Greenhouse. That's OGG.com for Olson's Greenhouse Gardens, where you can dream big, dream bold, and dream in color with beautiful plants and flowers from Olson's Greenhouse. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. In South Salt Lake, we do have a crash westbound 3300 south approaching 3rd West. It is tying up traffic there. And then for Utah County drivers, police have a few vehicles pulled over. And this is a little bit of a traffic hazard. It's as you make that turn from Center Street at the bottom of the on-ramp to go to northbound I-15 in Provo, and it's partially blocking that inside lane of travel. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. And our KSL weather showers taper off tonight. Skies clear up tomorrow. Highs stay in the 60s through the rest of the week. Right now, 45 degrees and cloudy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside, Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. We're continuing to focus on some of the things that really matter in terms of where we can make a difference and what individuals can do when we just decide to do that. And I think it's important, and we should never forget that real change always starts at home. Without the first small step into your community, towards your neighbor, the big goals we're all reaching for will never happen. And so we're going to get to an important space today. As we begin hour number two, we're going to step into the space in between. Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. 
Well, this is one of the stories uh, over the past year that has uh, stirred me uh, like no other. And it's time to come back to that conversation. We started with a conversation several months ago with Lois Collins from the Deseret News, who did just a brilliant deep dive into this organization called The In-Between. And uh, we're really thrilled to have joining us on the program today, Jillian Olmsted, who's the executive director of The In-Between. And uh, Jillian, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Boyd. So for our listeners who aren't familiar, uh, describe, uh, I think it's holy ground myself, uh, but describe this space in between. Sure. So we're providing a home-like environment for individuals who are experiencing homelessness and a medical crisis. Um, So we were originally created to fill that gap in services for someone who's too well a little bit too sick to be on the streets or in the shelter. So think about how if you've had anyone experience hospice services, they have a home and family to help provide that care, and homeless individuals don't have that. So we're providing that space for individuals to receive professional hospice care, or if they're not end of life and they just need some recuperative care, they can stay with us to qualify for life-saving cancer treatments or a variety of different um, medical treatments that might help someone get better versus continue to decline out on the streets. Yeah, and I I think that's one we often don't think about. Often when we talk about the unhoused and those that are experiencing homelessness, uh, we don't think about those who might actually be in need of hospice care or end-of-life care. Uh, And we often don't think about that. And and I think this is such a a beautiful way to go about providing that. Uh, Tell us how you you got to this. Uh, How did this begin? Uh, What was the kind of the genesis story of this? Yeah, so it was actually a nurse up at Huntsman Cancer Institute that was finding it very difficult to discharge these cancer patients or people who qualified for hospice care back to the streets. And so she spent many years trying to get this idea off the ground, um, worked with an interfaith roundtable in the local area um, with a lot of religious leaders, and then also worked closely with Fourth Street Clinic. Um, Eventually, they created a board of directors and a 501c3 And they opened in a small convent and elementary school close to downtown. And they were initially just taking in individuals who were hospice. And we quickly realized that we needed to have that medical respite side as well in hopes that we can get to people um, before their end of life and give them a chance to get better instead of just waiting for them to get worse. And um, then in 2018, we found this newer, bigger facility, which is much more ADA compliant. It's not two stories. Um, They're just shared rooms of two people or our hospice patients have uh, a private space. And it's definitely evolved over the years. And we're now um, uh, assisted living type two facilities. So we have licensed beds through the state and then also congregate care. Um, which is really the difference between those two is just what level of care do people need? Do they need medication management and assistance with toileting, eating, um, transferring from their bed to their wheelchair, things like that? But, yeah, it was just a great need for people. Where do they go when they discharge if they're not well enough to take care of themselves? Yeah, and I I think as we look at how we do that, I think how we treat uh, those that are struggling in those circumstances uh, speaks volumes about where we are as a society. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight on those that are kind of in those last stages, uh, you have a philosophy there that I think is important for us to think about uh, in terms of this whole idea of uh, no one dies alone. Describe that for us. Yeah, so, you know, we believe everyone deserves dignity at end of life, no matter what choices they made. Um, And since these individuals don't often have friends or family and we have limited staff, we want to make sure that when they're close to passing that they have someone next to their side. Um, So we created this program at the in-between that adopted um, the No One Dies Alone program, which is a nationally recognized volunteer program. We train our volunteers. We actually just had um, a training this Saturday. It's about three hours long. Um, Our nurse attends, our end-of-life doula attends, and our community engagement manager attends as well. And we just explain exactly what it's going to be like sitting bedside with someone, what to expect, Mm -hmm. um, when to call the nurse to have them come in and help. Um, And so when someone's actively passing, we send an alert to all of these trained NOTA volunteers, and they can sign up for shifts two, four, six hours long, um, and they can come and sit. And Mm -hmm. our end-of-life doula has already met with this individual and already knows what 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 their wishes are end of life do they want 
um, a chaplain to come in? Do they want music playing? Do they want someone to read to them? Or do they just want it to be kept quiet and calm? And so the volunteers in our end-of-life doula make sure that that happens for our residents. Yeah, that's such a, a powerful thing. Give us something that uh, you've taken away from this experience. There's always those things when you start out on a journey like this or as you're working in this kind of environment, uh, you have kind of those aha or wow moments. Uh, share one of those with us. I think it's that everybody is capable of change, no matter what they've been through in their life. Um, we've been talking a lot about a resident who recently moved out. She came to us years ago, and she was um, given six months to live. And most of the homeless resource centers in the city had banned her or given up on her because she was she was quite the client. Um, and she came back to us, and she was willing to accept the help, and she was willing to make some changes. And you would never know this of her talking to her now. She's the sweetest woman, and she's cancer-free. Um, she's living in her own apartment, paying her own rent, and she's doing really well. She's um, stopped by to see us a couple of times, and I think if, if you were to have asked me when she first came in if this was possible, I probably would have said no. Um, so I think it's just the amount of change that people can experience here when they see something different for themselves. And I think sometimes being caught up in the shelter system and substance use or mental health, they don't see anything better for them than what they're currently experiencing. So we try to give them a, you know, just a look of what it might be like to get their own space again if they yeah. if they get better. Um, so we do work with people if they are going to recuperate. We're, we're case managing them to get them onto housing lists, get them on any benefits uh, that they qualify for, and try and we try to break that cycle of homelessness, if at all possible, during their stay with us. Uh, fantastic. This is uh, just extraordinary stuff. Jillian Olmstead is the executive director of the In Between, I-N-N Between, the In Between. Uh, this is an extraordinary group making a difference in the lives of individuals in our community. You can be part of that as well. Jillian, thanks for all you're doing, and uh, thanks for joining us on Inside Sources today. Thank you, Boyd. That's Jillian Olmstead, executive director of the In Between uh, that'll get you to think again about what you think you know about end of life for someone who may be living on the street. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. You know, Deb, you and I have had this conversation so many times. We think, oh, I wish I had a little more light here or maybe a ceiling fan there. That's why we love Master Electrical. So anytime we have an electrical problem, we know we can call them and they will give us their upfront pricing guarantee. Because we're not going to do it yourself. We're going to leave it to the professionals. And this upfront pricing guarantee is fantastic. I'm sure you've been bitten by bids in the past where they say, oh, that's going to take half a day. And then two weeks later... The bid and the invoice have nothing to do with each other. Not only will you get their upfront pricing guarantee, but you will never see an upcharge. Their pricing system simply won't allow it. Master Electrical proudly serves from Logan to Santa Quin. They do everything that has to do with electrical, and they're always open, including for emergency services. The phone number to call is 801-543-2222. 801-543-2222 or check them out online at masterelectrical.com. Where were you on March 18th, 2020? Epicenter Magna, Utah. It was 5.7. Driving around these neighborhoods like a scene out of the Twilight Zone here. We're having an aftershock right now. We're feeling it. When it happens again, will you know what to do? Join us Thursday for The Great Utah Shakeout on KSL News Radio. Howdy, folks. It's me again. And surprise, it's tomato frenzy time at J&J &J Garden Center in Layton. Right now, all large size tomato plants are only $2.99 each. That's half price and grown from seed right here at J&J. &J. And while you're here, pick up a bag or two of J&J's private label all-purpose premium topsoil to help strengthen your vegetable garden for only $5.98 a cubic foot bag. So come to the tomato frenzy sale at J&J &J Garden Center in Layton where they have the best products at the best price and the best employees too. Take the Layton Parkway exit, Main Street to Gentile, then west two miles. You got to see it to believe it. You really do. Country grown to your home J&J &J Garden Center 
Emergency traffic brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. We do have a road closure. It is Highway 6 in both directions in Utah County. It's closed near Canyon Road in Spanish Fork. We're getting reports it may involve a rolled semi. We're trying to confirm those details. I can see where they are holding back all traffic, especially going eastbound. We'll get you updates as soon as they are available, but for right now, we do have high Highway 6 closed at Canyon Road in Spanish Fork. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Where does a journey to wellness begin? Do you start looking for diet ideas? Or searching for exercise plans? Actually, you don't have to look far. Just look to the first two letters of the word wellness. We means you don't have to figure it out yourself. It means your hopes and challenges are a perfect match for our knowledge and resources. It means anything you want to achieve, together, we can achieve better. Because wellness begins with we. Intermountain Health, the power of we. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financial, specializes in no market risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show. And call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing but upside here at 855-355-SAFE. Five S A F E. It's gonna be here before you know it. Here comes the summer, like a way to change. So the weight loss wants to help you look amazing in your swimsuit and shorts, but you gotta get started right now at SodaWeightLoss.com. No time? Try Soda's at-home program with all the support you need online. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was. When you start losing the weight, even that first five pounds, this enormous amount of confidence starts to build in you. You start to realize like, oh, this is possible for me. That's Lauren, and she's let go of 35 pounds with soda. With their help, I let go of 37 pounds, and I've kept it off for over two years now. That's because soda works. It's absolutely changed my life. Soda helps you break food addictions and get healthy for the rest of your life. It's why they have more than 8,700 Google reviews and countless before and after pictures and videos of people living the results every single day. Go to SotaWeightLoss.com. That's S-O-T-A WeightLoss.com. Does your business struggle with ISO, SOC 2, HIPAA, CMMC, NIST, or other compliance? Register now for the WebCheckSecurity.com Cyber Summit. That's WebCheckSecurity.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, the National Hockey League's Executive Committee has reportedly approved the Arizona Coyotes' move to Utah. Second, the court in former President Trump's hush money trial is ready to start picking a jury. And third, another new temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints getting ready to open its doors for public tours. Right now, 45 degrees in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Get deeper insights on the news from Inside Sources. We're coming back to the Middle East discussion to understand how this is all going to impact a lot of the battles going on in our nation's capital. And... As I was trying to make sense of all of this and try to get past the headlines, connect the dots, uh, this morning I turned to a place I always turn first thing in the morning. It's the early 202 newsletter from the Washington Post. And, of course, Theo Meyer Meyer is a national political reporter and co-author of the early 202. It's where I often start my morning. It's where you should start your morning. Uh, And some great insight in terms of how what has taken place over the weekend with Iran uh, firing uh, all that weaponry into Israel and, of course, the alliance coming together to, to knock all those down or get them off course. Uh, and now we're to the now what? What comes next in the conversation? And uh, really pleased to have Theo back on the show. And uh, give us your sense in terms of what this looks like in our nation's capital uh, as we return, we've got uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, who's uh, got all kinds of challenges inside of his conference and, and across the planet. Uh, now he's got some new dynamics in there, not just with Ukraine, but now Israel. Glad to be with you. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, I think this amps up the pressure on Johnson a little bit. We were already expecting uh, Johnson to move forward with some sort of Ukraine aid package this week. Um, What exact form that would take uh, remains unclear. But 
uh, I think on the Israel side, uh, you know, this attack has, uh, you know, heightened the desire by at least some Republicans in the House uh, to move forward with an Israel aid package um, sooner rather than later. Yeah, and so as, as you look at that, and you noted this in the 202 this morning, that uh, there was a call with President Biden, Speaker Johnson, Majority Leader Schumer, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, uh, all kind of navigating their way through that. And kind of walk us through, uh, some are just saying, hey, pick up the Senate's $95 billion with Ukraine, Israel, uh, Gaza Humanitarian, and Taiwan. Some are saying standalone Israel. I see the uh, White House is, is now starting to say, no, don't go there. Uh, what's your sense with kind of the competing angles and ways that this uh, might be brought to the floor of the House? Well, Democrats and Republicans have been battling over this for months, all the way back um, for six months, uh, you know, since October, um, when President Biden first uh, requested uh, this aid package that included money for Ukraine, money for Israel, some money for Taiwan as well. Uh, and humanitarian relief for Gaza. Um, the Senate, as you might remember, battled uh, for months over this. They tried to attach border security measures to it that ultimately failed, and the Senate passed a bill that looked like what Biden had originally requested. So now the House has to decide, do they just pass the Senate bill, uh, which a lot of Republicans are very against because they do not want to aid Ukraine, uh, and also perhaps because the House uh, is often loath to just pick up what the Senate has passed and pass it themselves. Right. <laughs> or do they, you know, try to create their own version of the legislation? Um, or do they do nothing or just try to move an Israel bill uh, on its own? Yeah, I, I think that's so interesting. Uh, and you're so right. The House just doesn't like to pick up things that were done in the Senate <laughs> and pass them. That doesn't seem to be the way they uh, have ever responded under whether it's Republicans or Democrats in charge. Uh, but as you look at that and as uh, you look at the dynamics and what Speaker Mike Johnson is facing, does this give him a, an interesting lane to navigate? Because clearly, clearly there was a letter this morning from 75 or 100 members of the House, Democrats and Republicans, saying, hey, pick up the Senate bill and go. Does this give him a space to say, look, there's enough international conflict. We just need to get this done, uh, knowing that uh, or hoping, I guess, that the Democrats would pick up uh, anything by uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene in terms of vacating the chair? Well, so support for the Senate bill or, you know, something relatively like the Senate bill um, probably has the support of uh, almost all Democrats, except for, you know, maybe two dozen or so, maybe fewer, um, who are so concerned about Israel aid um, that they would vote against uh, such a bill uh, rather than sending more military aid to Israel. Um, and probably roughly half of House Republicans um, remain supportive of an approach like that. So that is probably probably enough to pass something under suspension, which requires um, two thirds of lawmakers to pass. Um, but there's all sorts of things that you um, don't have to do. You don't have to pass a rule, and you get around a bunch of procedural stuff uh, that way. Okay. So that is one route that Johnson yeah. could go. But it would make the other half of House Republicans really mad at him. <laughs> right, which I think is going to be his job uh, for as long as he's in that job, is uh, deciding uh, and picking who he wants to be mad at him at any given moment. I think that's uh, part of the gig these days, it seems like. All right, uh, Theo Meyer, national political reporter for The Washington Post, co-author of the Early 202 newsletter. Uh, Theo, thanks so much for joining us today. Glad to be with you. All right, and that's Theo Meyer, Meyer, national political reporter for The Washington Post. And I think it's interesting as we watch all of this play out, there are so many unique dynamics coming into this. And, and I actually think it could be an interesting opportunity for Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, uh, to act and to have some confidence that he can act. Uh, to get uh, this aid package done that would benefit Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, uh, and some uh, humanitarian relief into Gaza. Uh, and that I think he would have enough Democrats that would back him uh, if Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to pull the trigger on vacating the chair, in other words,
creating a new speaker battle. Uh, I think it actually could actually serve the the Speaker of the House well to engage there. Now, really interesting, uh, things are changing so fast. So the White House has come out and said to the House, do not send us a an Israel-only aid package. So that's coming from the White House. Meanwhile, the Freedom Caucus has also put out a statement uh, saying that uh, they do not want this to be an excuse, that what has taken place in Israel to be an excuse for passing Ukraine funding uh, without real debate. Uh, and so I think, that again, interesting coming from the different flanks of the different parties uh, to see what they're willing to do, what they're not willing to do, where they want to stand their ground, where they want to make a political point, and hopefully, hopefully in all of that, We have enough people who get to the principle and policy question of what is in the best interest of the United States and what is in the best interest of our allies, in particular Ukraine and Israel, uh, and what does that mean in those areas? What does it mean as it relates to Vladimir Putin and to China and to North Korea? Because they're all interconnected with Iran. Uh, So there's a lot of messages that are being sent and not just not just those that are on the headlines today. It's a lot of the underneath stuff uh, where the real conversations are going, where the real diplomatic dances are being had. And so we're going to watch this very closely as we see what Speaker of the House Mike Johnson decides to do. I think this will be a definitive moment in his time in the Speaker's chair with the Speaker's gavel. How he, not only what he does, but how he does it, I think is going to have a big impact. And this is a moment where he may lead, and he may lead in a way that surprises people in terms of how he goes about his work. And I think he is one. We had him on the program last week. And he is one who I think makes the decision, and he doesn't have his finger in the wind, and he's not just going to poll test something. Uh, And he is someone who deeply appreciates the institution of Congress and recognizes the need for us to rebuild some trust and confidence in Congress. And this may be one of those moments. So we're going to watch this very close. And, of course, KSL News Radio has got you covered as everything continues to transpire in the Middle East as well as continues to unfold in Ukraine uh, and other parts around the world. And all of this, of course, impacts us right back here at home. All right, we'll step aside for some bottom-of-the-hour news. Don't go anywhere. More Inside Sources coming up next. Stick around. It's 2.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top local story today. We have some breaking news the mouth of Spanish Fork Canyon. There's a semi rollover there that uh, is uh, blocking the road right now. A helicopter is responding to a deal with injuries at that scene. And Ricky Meese will have more on our traffic picture coming up in just a moment. This Friday, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will start its open house for the new Leighton Temple. The executive director of the church's temple department, Kevin Duncan, expects big crowds but lines not as long as the one recently at the Manti Temple open house. The Manti Temple open house was only three weeks. This one is double that, and instead of three Saturdays, this one is seven Saturdays. The best option to uh, get a a reservation to tour it is to go to churchofjesuschrist.org for uh, the reservation page. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. Protesters demanding an end to the ongoing war in Gaza shut down traffic on two major commuter routes in the Bay Area this morning. SF Gate reports demonstrators chained themselves to barrels on Interstate 880 in Oakland. A different group blocked the Golden Gate Bridge north of San Francisco. Protests were also reported on a bridge leading into New York City and at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. Your money at this moment, at the close of trading, the Dow Jones average was down 248 points on the day. The Nasdaq was down to 290 points, and the S&P 500 down 61. And our KSL weather. Looks like uh, the rain is going to clear up tonight. That's next. KSL News Time 231. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcasts for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. 
Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up! and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 1, 5, and 10 gig data plans with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plans offered by T-Mobile and Verizon January 2024. Free. Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. Program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. When it comes to your electrical system, do you know the warning signs to look for? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and it's okay if you don't know, but here are a few things that you might not even realize could be a sign of a bigger problem. Wall plates that are hot to the touch. Discoloration around switches or outlets. If you hear crackling or popping or buzzing around switches, switches or outlets, a breaker that trips a lot, switches that feel loose when you operate them, if your lights dim or flicker when a major appliance comes on, if your plugs fall out of the wall easily. You know, you're not supposed to have to bend the prongs out on a plug just to get it to stay in the wall. If you notice any of these things, you should consider having a licensed electrician check your system out. If you don't know anyone, Any Hour Services has put together a radio-only special for any homeowners listening. One of our licensed electricians will perform a comprehensive electrical inspection and give you a full written report for only $29, but you have to mention this ad when you call. To schedule your comprehensive electrical inspection by a licensed electrician for only $29, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7300. That's 801-443-7300. Any Hour Services. Oh, honey, it's our favorite Leaf Filter Trusted Pro, Matt. Matt, come in, come in. Hi, Mrs. Sparks. You wanted me to stop by? Is everything okay with your Leaf Filter Gutter Protection System? Okay. Of course, silly. We wanted you to stop by for dinner as our way of thanking you. Yes, to thank you for that free gutter inspection, the free estimate, and uh, what was the other thing? That lifetime guarantee. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Sparks, those are just Leaf Filter's policies. Everyone who calls Leaf Filter gets a trusted pro to come out for a free gutter inspection and estimate. And every Leaf Filter installation comes with a lifetime guarantee. So so it's not just us? No, sir. We don't want anyone to worry about clogged gutters ever again. You mean everyone gets this level of service? Everyone. They just need to visit leafilter.com slash build to schedule their free inspection. Okay, okay, but you must be starving. You work so hard. Ready to love your gutter protection as much as we do? Visit leafilter.com slash build and get up to 30% off today. See representative for warranty details. Promotion is 20% off plus a 10% senior or military discount. One discount per household. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. We have a serious injury accident in Utah County, and it does involve a rolled vehicle with a medical chopper on the way. This is Highway 6, uh, right between Canyon Road and Powerhouse Road in Spanish Fork by the windmills. So it's before you even get to Spanish Fork Canyon. Once the medical chopper is there, all traffic will likely be stopped. But right now, we're seeing delays in both directions. SNS Roofing is your trusted source for quality and affordability. They've been the top roofing company in Utah for over 40 years. Schedule an estimate now. Get a free quote at snsroofinginc.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Showers will taper off tonight. Skies clear up tomorrow. Highs stay in the 60s through the rest of the week. Right now, 46 degrees and cloudy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside, Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, wherever you are listening, just settle in sit down uh you're gonna think again about what you think you know and uh, this is a fascinating conversation based on an extraordinary piece in the atlantic uh it's called the consequences of the serengeti land grab so in the name of conservation the african government has snatched hundreds of acres of land away from its indigenous people the maasai is the question then becomes is Boosted tourism worth the death of a culture? Does the government have the right to do this? Who who are the stakeholders and whose land is it anyway? 
Uh, and this is just an extraordinary piece. Really thrilled to have joining us on the program for the first time, Stephanie McCrumman, staff writer at The Atlantic. She's won numerous awards for her political journalism, uh, two George Polk Awards and a Pulitzer Prize. Not a bad resume, uh, but she's a great writer. And uh, this is a piece you should just go absorb. It's the only way I can describe it. You don't just read it. You have to experience it. And Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for that nice introduction. Uh, so give us, uh, for our listeners who didn't wake up this morning thinking about the Serengeti and the Maasai, uh, give us a, a perspective of what led you to this and uh, give us the, the real essence of the issue. Sure. Um, well, um, I uh, in a pre- my previous, um, one of my previous jobs was to be um, a, course, a foreign correspondent in East Africa. So um, so I had I had written about um, issues similar to this in the in the past and and heard of what was happening and um, in Tanzania. So um, so the story is um, it's about um, you know what's unfolding in northern Tanzania with regard to the Maasai and the Maasai are a pastoralist people. They're they're cattle people. So their culture, their way of life, their livelihood. Um, revolves around keeping cattle. And they migrated um, into northern Tanzania approximately 400 years ago. And they settled in this um, extraordinarily lush um, land that they called Serenget, um, which in the Ma language means the place where the land runs on forever. And it's, and it's, it's now, of course, more familiarly known as um, Serengeti. Um, and so so they settled in this area, and then really ever since the colonial period in the in the nineteen you know forties fifties in this time zone they they um their you know their history really has been a history of of trying to um hang on to this land um so so the British colonial authorities were sort of the first ones to evict the Maasai. they evicted the Maasai out of you know what is now Serengeti National Park. Um, and so the Maasai people um, live currently, there are about 200,000 people who live um, in and around this tourist zone. Um, and, you know, perhaps some of your listeners may have been lucky enough to go on a safari um, and they would know the Maasai people as um, these people who wear bright red shawls and um, lots of beads and they often serve as guides. Um, uh, on safaris um, in this part of Tanzania and, and Kenya, I should say as well. But um, but um, but the the Maasai have have really come into conflict um, with the safari industry, with conservation groups, and um, successive Tanzanian governments um, yeah. in recent decades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so interesting, uh, and you tell the the story in such a, a rich way in terms of how they're trying to hold on to that and what that looks like, and and the fact that they're. They're being told by these groups that you just named between the, the governments, the conservation groups, the safari groups, that, that, that they're the problem uh, in all of this. And I, I just have to read this. Th- I'm going to quote you to yourself <laughs> sure, uh, because it's so good. And I want our listeners to get this, that the, the reality is that the Maasai have been stewards, integral in creating the very ecosystem. And, and you also point out that the same can be said of a lot of indigenous groups around the world. Who are natural yeah. conservationists? Yes. Yeah, so, so I'm I'm so happy that you know that, that you're keying in on this point because um, because yes. Yeah, so the the image the image that gets sold um, very often of of the Serengeti ecosystem and and many parts of the world, including I should say you know places like the Yosemite Valley in in the United States. But the the image that gets sold is in a way is is that this is a primordial landscape, that this is somehow a pre-human landscape um, that has, you know, sort of, is sort of untouched so that when you see it, you're just looking at, you know, unbridled, you know, nature before humans came. The reality is closer to, uh, you know, Serengeti is more like a tended landscape. The Maasai lived there for 400 years. And of course, they, they're being cattle people, they need grasses. Um, so their culture really revolves around maintaining this ecosystem. They do they have very intricate land management systems traditionally. So they do controlled burns. They rotate grasses. Um, they have rules around not cutting down trees um, and moving their cattle um, during you know when the wildebeest are in their calving season. 
um, they will move away because they know the wildebeest carry a certain disease. It's deadly to cattle. Um, so during that time, and so you know, so so the true. You know, when 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 we see the Serengeti on a documentary film or these breathtaking photos, um, we're really looking at a landscape that the Maasai had a, a very serious hand in creating. Um, the grasses that their cattle need are also the grasses that you know zebras need, antelope, um, you know these other wild animals. And so this is, um, as you said, yes, this is true of many indigenous groups around the world. Yeah, and I, I, I just think that's something we always have to come back to, that the people who are closest to the land are usually the best stewards of the land because they they get it. Uh, and too yeah. often we, we make it complicated and have some government or some agency say, no, we, we know better. Right, right. And um, so really from, you know, if you're, an, if you're an indigenous person and the Maasai consider themselves to be an indigenous people and you hear that, you know, oh, this land is going to be, uh, walled off in the name of conservation, you know, you think, well, what does that mean? Um, we were conserving it. So they hear this word, they often consider it to be synonymous with land grab, um, some kind of a land grab or something that, that in any case is going to cause them trouble. Um, and um, and that is indeed, um, you know, what is happening in northern Tanzania, that, that um, many thousands of um Square miles of land are being set aside in the name of conservation, which turns out to mean tourism, which turns out to mean a hunting playground for the Dubai royal family, for example, mm. in one case that I wrote about. Yeah, that is uh, that is so fascinating. Uh, this is such a, a rich read. We could spend like two hours uh, going through just sure. the stories <laughs> that you're you're painting there. Give us one thing as you've gone through this whole process. Uh, kind of give us your what's your therefore what out of this in terms of uh, where things are and, and what you hope to see uh, as this battle and this uh, this tension continues. Well, um, I mean, I should say, you know, I can, you know, rather channel, you know, what the what Maasai leaders would hope to see, um, or maybe is more appropriate. And and you know, the Maasai are not against tourism at all uh, or tourists and. And I, you know, I, I hope that the story, you know, the story did not intend to sort of vilify tourists at all who were, after all, you know, anyone would be lucky to see this, um, <clears throat> this incredible landscape and uh, animals in this place uh, and meet the Maasai as well. Um, so, so the Maasai would, I think, would hope to, um, to be part of the solution um, in northern Tanzania. They want to be consulted. They want to be you know, have their rights respected. Um, and they, you know, they would like to, you know, to see see tourism flourish. Um, and they would also like to see their culture flourish as well. Um, and, 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 you know, they think that that is very much possible um, and that what is happening right now in northern Tanzania is really um, – it really just doesn't have to be that way, that it's, it's unnecessary. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it's such a great example of getting lost in, in all of the complexities of it all and redefining of, I mean, everyone hears conservation and everyone cheers, and we should. That's an important thing. Sure. Uh, but when we redefine it, and it, it's like you said, it's it's safari and it's, it's this, that, and the other, uh, it sort of loses that context, uh, which usually leads us to really bad spaces. Uh, th again, this is so rich. You need to just go sit down and read this today. Uh, it'll change your perspective, and it will give you perspective. Uh, maybe in some ways that are, will surprise you. Stephanie McCrumman, a uh, staff writer at The Atlantic. You can check it out at theatlantic.com. Uh, and this is the uh, part of their uh, magazine coming up for May as well. And, Stephanie, we really appreciate you joining us and uh, fabulous writing, beautiful perspective. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. So we'll step aside for one last break. Uh, it's a brilliant piece. It will literally, the writing will transport you uh, to the Serengeti. Uh, and you'll see the lives of the Maasai, what they're doing, what they're up against, uh, and what conservation really means in the end. Stick around. We'll be right back.
three days only. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Save thousands on hot tubs and swim spas. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Mountain America Expo Center Sandy. Hot tubs discounted 40 to 80% to the lowest possible price. Starting at $29.99. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Mountain America Expo Center Sandy. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas. From 11 feet to over 19 feet. Swim spas offer low impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation, and installation in one day. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Everything must go. Free parking, free admission. You can't afford to miss this. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Friday noon to 8 p.m. Saturday 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Mountain America Expo Center Sandy. Visit hot tub and swim spa sale.com. Emergency traffic brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Well, Highway 6 seeing another nasty crash. And even though we do have delays in both directions, it is mostly affecting the westbound side of Highway 6 by Powerhouse Road. This is near the windmills, so we're not into Spanish Fork Canyon, but all lanes of travel are blocked westbound. And this is a serious accident. It could take a while. If this is your drive for the afternoon, you want to consider delaying your travel time or using an alternate route or give yourself extra time because these delays will linger. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Cent Center. Common Spirit Health has expert orthopedic care that gets you back at it and back to your best. Find skilled orthopedic physicians at Common Spirit locations who specialize in general orthopedics and repair of hips, knees, shoulders, and hands, so you can return to running races or chasing the grandkids. Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advanced health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Orthopedic care with human kindness is here. Visit mountain.commonspirit.org. When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede, except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double-pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah. They install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. When you think of Utah's homeless, who do you see? They are people with names and faces and many are in dire circumstances. They are men and women, and sometimes children. Many are living on the street, in a car, or in a shelter. Some choose to be homeless, most do not. Many experience the challenges of addiction or mental illness. All are vulnerable. Homelessness is a crisis one that affects us all. Utah is building a coalition of community leaders and concerned citizens united to end the plight of homelessness. Homelessness should not mean hopelessness. Learn more at projecthumandignity.org. A message from Utah Impact Partnership. Troy, do you think it's safe to say the S word out loud yet? Probably not on the radio, right? Right. Smart. I just can't wait to be completely covered by the warmth of it again, you know? Not sure I do. Sure you do. We all felt that magical feeling of your first trip in it. Your what? I just miss that strong, fresh, natural aroma of spring. That's the S word you're worried about? I don't want to jinx it. 
winter is listening. Well, luckily, early spring camping is one of the best things about RVs. That's why Bish's RV is going all in on early spring deals now during our spring camping sale. Oh, yeah. Kick up your camping season early with pricing starting under $149 per month on approved credit. Clearance pricing on remaining new 2023s and 90 days of all play, no pay OAC. Plus, every RV purchase receives a free one-year Bish Fix membership. Your fast track to RV service repairs. Shop the best deals now at Bish's.com slash RV search. Only for a limited time and only at Bish's RV in Salt Lake and American Fork, where memories begin. Offer OAC based on 20% down, 8.99% APR for 180 months. Stock number 80977, subject to prior sales. See dealer for details. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Salt Lake City is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation. And kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Salt Lake City at 801-263-7777. That's 801-263-7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, the National Hockey League's Executive Committee has reportedly approved the Arizona Coyotes' move to Utah. Second, the court in former President Trump's hush money trial is ready to start picking a jury. And third, another new temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints getting ready to open its doors for public tours. Right now, 45 degrees in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. As we round out the program today, if you've missed anything along the way, you missed a lot today. <laughs> we spent some good time really diving into the issues underneath the headlines as it relates to Iran, Israel, Hamas and Gaza, Ukraine, <laughs> Russia, uh, and a host of other things that come to the international front and what actually comes next. We're watching very closely to see what Speaker of the House Mike Johnson will do as it relates to aid for Israel, uh, whether he tries to do that as a standalone package, whether he takes up the Senate-passed bill. Again, I already cleared the Senate that has uh, $96 billion of aid for Israel, Ukraine, for Taiwan, and also humanitarian aid for Gaza. Uh, whether that becomes the path on a bipartisan basis and what that means for the Speaker and for keeping the gavel as Speaker, we'll continue to watch all of that uh, as it continues to play out. And uh, most importantly, we'll continue to watch the unrest in the region and see what Israel chooses to do next. Uh, President Biden has sent a clear message, although Clarity may not be the, the right word, uh, as he gave uh, Iran very clear mandate, uh, don't do it before the weekend. They did it. Uh, now he's telling Israel not to respond or to retaliate, to show restraint. Uh, that uh, becomes part of it. The president saying, take the win, uh, and uh, you were able to defeat uh, the 300-plus uh, missiles and drones that were uh, sent towards Israel. Uh, so that's going to continue to be a, a dominant force as we go through the week this week. And so we'll continue to cover all of that here on KSL News Radio. And uh, I also want to, to just take a, a quick peek in terms of uh, what comes next on all of that, uh, because you do have the White House saying, don't do a standalone Israel package. Uh, you've got the Freedom Caucus in the House of Representatives saying, don't do the big package with aid for Israel and Ukraine tied together. They want to see that separately. So we'll watch all of that. And then, of course, the real unifying force in the United States of America today is the grumbling we all have as we file our taxes. And it is a, a little bit of a dreary day here in the Beehive State, uh, maybe appropriate for those of us uh, getting the taxes in at the last minute. You do have till midnight to get those in or file an extension, of course. Check with your provider on that one. Uh, but an interesting conversation we had earlier in the day with Eric Bain from Reason and just busting some of the myths around taxes. 
in this country because taxes have become the political playground and great bumper sticker slogans and a great way to rally the base or great one-liners and speeches for both Democrats and Republicans. And I thought it was interesting that Eric Bame kind of went and blasted through a lot of the rhetoric, the very populist rhetoric from both the left and the right. And, of course, the, the most common is, you know, get the rich to pay their fair share. Well, what is that? And what does that actually mean? The wealthiest Americans are now paying a higher share of federal taxes than at any time in the past 40 years. And yet there's still this gap between what the American people perceive in terms of the tax code and who is actually shouldering the burden of most of the costs. Uh, and so it's not, it's, again, it's easy for populists. It's easy to do the class warfare thing. Uh, it all works out really well. The president uh, has used a phrase for many years now that just simply doesn't add up. And that is that American billionaires pay an average of just 8%. Uh, that's been debunked and uh, by multiple people on both the left and the right who just say, stop saying that because it's not true. Uh, the more important thing is that we have to start to understand where we are uh, in terms of what's being collected. Uh, and yes, the wealthy are paying the bulk, the lion's share. Now, have tax rates gone down for the wealthy? Yes, they have over the over the last few years, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and most people uh, don't recall that in 1980, in 1980, the highest marginal tax rate was 70%. Now, even if you're making a whole lot of money, there's something that doesn't feel very fair share <laughs> if someone is taking 70 cents out of every dollar that you earn. Uh, that's a pretty high cost. Uh, and so now we've settled into about 37% as the highest marginal tax rate. Uh, but again, it's easy to, to vilify and demonize and do the class warfare thing. Uh, the reality is, is I think less about how much more taxes we need to collect. I think we've got to figure out how much we're spending because that's where the bigger hole is in the boat. Uh, it's about what we're spending and, and quite honestly, what we're spending it on. And so to me, we've, we've got to get past just a tax question. Uh, we, do, we can have a tax question. Uh, that's, that's fair game, and, and we should decide that uh, in front of the American people, not behind some closed doors in some 2,000-page bill nobody's going to read. So let's talk about it. Who should pay what? Let's have that. Fair and square, straight up, make it straight. And then let's talk about what are we actually spending that on. And most important, what are we getting out of it? If the American people are going to pay taxes for government services, they better get really, really good government services. And they better be able to hold their elected officials accountable for what services they're getting, what services they're not getting, the quality, and most important, the results. Because it always comes down to the results in the end. All right, that wraps it up for us on Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. I am Boyd Matheson. Thanks for joining us today. And as always, as you go out into the world, make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference. Here than in all but a few states. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera live with the story. Eric. Jeff, the drugs topping the list are way.